Hello. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. We do truly live in unprecedented times. Coronavirus has changed the way we live our lives. But my PLA colleagues have played their part keeping the port open and the nation supplied. Since lockdown began, more than 3,500 ship movements have taken place. and Food, fuel and medicines have been delivered uninterrupted. Achieving this has drawn on the resilience, ingenuity and commitment of many thousands of people across the Thames. From terminal operators to ship operators, tug companies, ships agents, logistics firms and many more. I want to thank everyone for their monumental collective effort and recognise the frontline PLA teams who have helped coordinate port operations and the pilots who have guided ships to and from their berths on the Thames. Fortunately, restrictions are slowly easing. Recreational activities are now allowed again and passenger vessel operations should restart in mid-June. During lockdown, we've been actively exploring new ways of keeping customers and stakeholders updated with the latest port and river developments. And this film forum is part of that commitment. Today, you'll hear in turn from Robin, our CEO, Bob, our Chief Harbour Master, and Julie, our CFO. They'll talk about 2019 performance, 2020 priorities, and our outlook for the future. I'll come back after the presentations to cover off how you can ask questions. Thank you for taking an interest in the PLA annual report and accounts and the results for 2019. As the chairman has said, we thought that it would be better to crack on and deliver the presentations as normal, albeit in this digital format rather than the usual public meeting, and very much look forward to meeting with a range of our stakeholders as soon as we can once the coronavirus restrictions end. The first slide shows at a headline level the main activities in the port and on the river in 2019. So starting with port trade, in 2019, over 54 million tonnes of cargo were handled in the Port of London, which was our busiest year for over a decade. Inland port trade was also significantly up, with almost 5 million tonnes carried between terminals on the river, driven partly by the significant increase in spoiler materials for the Thames Tideway infrastructure project. Passenger transport was broadly flat at around 10 million passenger journeys. And looking at our recreational activity, there were more sporting events recorded than ever before, showing a vibrant river at the centre of the capital's life. Overall, we see significant progress towards the Thames Vision goals of more economic and social activity taking place on the River Thames. Turning now to our key performance indicators on which we measure progress in the PLA. You will see in detail in our annual report and accounts these measures set out. And turning first to our safety performance. Bob Baker, our Chief Harbour Master, will say more on this in his presentation in a few moments. But at a headline level, we saw good progress with significant reduction in the number of serious or very serious navigational incidents on the river and in the port. On our own health and safety, that's for our own staff, contractors and those who work on our site, again we saw progress with a reduction in the number of reportable lost time accidents down to two in 2019. That's still too, too many. We always target zero harm for all of our people. Encouragingly, we saw an increase in near miss reporting, which is a good sign of our underlying culture with more open reporting of near misses and risks, which obviously provides the basis for addressing and reducing the number of accidents. So 170 near miss reports or hazard observations in 2019. We also saw in 2019 strong customer service performance. In pilotage, we sustained a service of over 98% of vessels served without delay across the year, which is a significant improvement and reflected the investments and changes we've made over the last two to three years. Julie Tankard, our CFO, in a few moments will set out our financial results in more detail. But you will see from our annual report and accounts that we made a healthy surplus in 2019. And as a trust port, we invest, we reinvest this money for the benefit of our stakeholders and to sustain our operations into the future. Finally, before leaving this slide, there are two things to mention where we made good progress in 2019, with the results showing through this year. First, we continue to invest in our digitalisation. 
and in particular a new online portal for the submission and processing of licensing and dredging applications. This will provide a simpler and better way for our customers to interact with the PLA and provide a more transparent and efficient system. Second, we made good progress in the work to develop our Harvard Revision Order to modernise our 1968 PLA Act, which has not been substantially updated in that last 50 year period. We held extensive consultation with our stakeholders during 2019 and the early part of this year. And we have now submitted the HRO to the MMO, the Marine Management Organisation, for processing. Moving on now to our environmental performance. It's worth remembering that as a trust port, one of our overriding principles is to pass the port and the river on in a better condition to the next generation than we inherited it. And that's very much at the core of our approach to air quality, climate change and other environmental goals. In relation to air quality, we continued in 2019 to implement our air quality strategy published the previous year. We carried out a number of important new measures. In particular, we held a Greening Inland Shipping Conference, bringing together for the first time a range of operators and technology providers to look at the potential for reducing emissions to net zero from all forms of inland shipping. We also carried out an extensive monitoring programme around Greenwich Ship Tier, a promise we've made to local residents, and the results of that will be published very soon. We also brought into service the UK's first hybrid pilot cutter operating out of Gravesend. And looking more broadly, we began our programme to focus on net zero across the port and the PLA, in particular decarbonisation, the biggest challenge facing us environmentally over the next generation. Turning out to wider investment developments on the river, 2019 saw a significant step forward in terms of the infrastructure of the port. Having gained development consent order approval, Tilbury 2 was under development throughout 2019, and as I record this in May 2020, it's just about to open. This is the most significant development in the port in the last five years, and significantly increases Tilbury's capacity. Elsewhere on the river, we saw a range of developments from the Oikos oil terminal with new berthing facilities, as shown in the picture, the Tideway Tunnel project, operational across multiple sites continuing throughout 2019 and reaching over halfway point in early 2020, and London Gateway continuing to develop both its landside facilities and preparations for berth four. As Christopher said in his introduction, the main purpose of this presentation is to review the 2019 performance as set out in our annual report and accounts in the normal way at an annual general meeting. However, I do want at this point to touch on the 2020 position and of course the response to COVID-19. The first thing I would say is that it has been a fantastic response from across the port community supported by the PLA to keep the port operational and the nation supplied with essential goods and materials. Within the PLA, we've maintained all of our essential operations throughout the COVID-19 period and are now returning to normal as far as possible with our COVID secure risk assessment in place in line with government policy. The overall economic effects of the coronavirus crisis are of course at this point still far from clear. We do know, however, that 2020 is going to be a very challenging year for all Thames businesses and of course, businesses across the wider economy. And the PLA is affected by that like any other business. We have therefore prioritised only safety critical capital and operational expenditure and essential activities. Uh, and we will be making savings as far as possible in order to limit the economic impacts across 2020. But it's gonna be a tough year. So finally, as we look forward over the next year and beyond, there are three overriding priorities which will continue to guide the PLA's approach. The first is, as always, to keep our people safe and the safety of the wider river community. That is always the PLA's overarching priority and will remain so. But of course, now we additionally need to take account of the risks around the spread of coronavirus and will continue to follow all relevant government guidance. Second, our focus will be on economic recovery of the port and river as we work through the sharp downturn in 2020 and grow in strength into next year. We will play our part in supporting us through this difficult period. 
And third, through this, we will maintain our focus on sustainability. If this coronavirus crisis has taught us one thing, it is that we need to be prepared at a global level for the risks and challenges that face us. And one of those is certainly the impending risk of climate change and other environmental challenges. So as we focus on economic recovery, we will focus on a green recovery and play our part in continuing to support moves towards sustainability, both in our own operations and on the wider river. I now hand over to Bob Baker, our Chief Harbour Master, who will talk in more detail about our safety performance in 2019 and the pilotage service. Hello, I'm Bob Baker, Chief Harbour Master for the Port of London Authority, responsible for safety and services on the river. I will provide a brief summary for 2019 of our safety performance, our service levels, as well as some details of the measures we have taken to combat COVID-19. Throughout 2019, due to the efforts of all river users, we continue to improve our safety performance and recorded a 33% reduction in serious navigational incidents. This exceeded the target we had set ourselves to reduce such incidents by 10%. Throughout the year, we launched a number of safety initiatives. These included, with the support of Prince William, the Drowning Prevention Strategy. This was a collaborative effort involving a number of different organisations working together to try and reduce not just accidental drownings on the river, but also the tragic cases of suicide, which occur far too often. The new Tideway Code was launched, which combined two previous codes, so not only delivered a new up-to-date code, but also achieved one of our Red Tape Challenge objectives to reduce the number of procedures and codes. Many thanks to the numerous organisations that participated and assisted in producing this excellent document. Through our analysis of incident reports, we had seen an increase in incidents where the main cause was mechanical failure. We therefore launched a successful safety campaign around vessel maintenance. And I'm pleased to say we have already seen the improvements of this initiative and would like to thank everyone who works on the river or uses the river for sporting and recreational activities for their continued efforts to keep the river safe. 2019 was a record year for pilotage acts as demand continued to grow. Over 14,000 acts of pilotage were safely completed, of which over 10,600 were sea pilotage acts. Following the improvements we had put in place for our pilotage operations, including the annual recruitment of 12 new pilots since 2016, I'm pleased to say we achieved a service level of 98% in 2019, a significant improvement from 2016 and 2017. At the end of 2019, we had 89 authorised sea pilots, which is nearly a 40% increase from our low point in 2016. We have continued to recruit in 2020, despite the difficulties of COVID-19 has placed on training. And we plan to continue recruiting in 2021, although we will review this depending on demand, pilot retirements, etc. We however remain focused to ensure we not only maintain, but can continue to improve our pilotage service level. Our focus in 2020, as we face the challenges of COVID-19, has been to maintain our high levels of safety while ensuring that crucial services are maintained to keep the UK's supply chain running. We continue to invest and have recently placed an order for a new state-of-the-art VHF radio system, which although being delayed during these difficult times, we hope to have fully operational by the end of the year. This investment in new technology is essential to ensure that we continue to deliver an effective service to river users. With the outbreak of COVID-19, we immediately put measures in place to protect our staff with a priority on our critical essential workers, that is pilots, VTS officers, launch and cutter crews, as well as our marine services and hydrographic operations. Disciplines were introduced in line with government guidance to ensure social distancing where possible, frequent hand washing and where required self-isolation. In addition, we built on our resilience in critical areas, for example, training our marine river inspectors to be pilot cutter masters to provide greater flexibility and capability. I'm pleased to say that we have continued to provide both a safe and efficient service for our customers and the UK during these difficult times. I would like to thank all our staff and all our river users for their continued support. Thank you. I'm Julie Tankard and I'm just going to walk you through a few slides on the financial performance of the PLA. 
2019 was a very strong operational performance for the PLA, where we saw an operating surplus of 7.2 million. Um, this was largely down to increased income from both Conservancy and also Riverworks licences and our investment income starting to pull through. We saw some corresponding cost increases in line with that income and also this uh, increase in cost reflects the investments we've made in the recruiting of additional pilots. In arriving at the 10.1 million profit before tax, we had the benefit of a four million pound property revaluation of Peruvian and Plasto Wharf, which we acquired in 2016. Financial results put us in good stead as we're now um, finding our way through 2020 um, and the economic challenges that COVID-19 are presenting. I'm really pleased that in 2019, our investment plan really started to come to fruition. We saw tenants move into Peruvian Wharf and Plasto Wharf. We saw the completion of the Semex Northfleet conveyor and really delighted to say that we acquired Royal Primrose Wharf. The investment plan is how we're going to deliver on the Thames Vision goals and it also helps us to diversify our income stream which will give us a more financially secure future. Pilotage has been a key focus for us over the last couple of years and that's really been about delivering the service that we know that our customers need. During 2019 we built on the IT infrastructure to support pilotage and we also invested heavily in the recruitment of additional pilots who are going through their training process at the moment um, and this is really fundamental to being able to deliver the service levels that we know that our customers need. The result of those actions though mean that despite growing pilotage income to 25 million Pilotage profit was actually break even in 2019. This is not a sustainable position moving forward. And in 2019, we announced at our charges review that we would make some changes to the pilotage charging structure. Most notably that we will now start to charge for the second pilot on ships above 365 metres long. As we move into 2020, clearly our focus is going to be on delivering the high quality pilotage service. The PLA takes very seriously its responsibilities to service the pension deficit. And despite paying significant amounts into the scheme over the last 10 years, the deficit has remained stubbornly high. At the end of 2019, we reported a 62 million pound deficit the impact of COVID-19 has significantly worsened this position and we'll be monitoring this closely as we go into the next triennial valuation, which is due in March 2021. In order to mitigate future risk on pensions, we are in discussion with the unions and employees to launch a new defined contribution scheme, which would be available for new joiners of the PLA from January 2021. We are very aware of the need to be able to offer our future employees a good scheme, but at the same time balance off the risk of building up future liabilities on pensions. We think the launch of this new scheme will improve our position in being able to service the future debt on the current scheme. As we looked to 2020, we're currently in the midst of COVID-19, which is an unprecedented amount of economic and social impact. Um, our business, like most businesses, has deteriorated. And during the second quarter of our business, so that's from April to June, we're expecting to see our volumes reduced by circa 30%. Um, we're planning that from July going back out into December, that we'll start to see a, an improvement in that decline and we're projecting across the full year that our income will be down by circa £8 million. 
We are very focused on cost reduction and conserving cash and monitoring our bad debt position as an increasing number of our customers are finding themselves uh, unable to pay bills. Having said all of that, the PLA, as I said at the outset of this, is in a very strong position um, and our performance in 2019 has considerably helped the difficult position which we now find ourselves in. And as we go forward this year, we'll be working with our customers to support the recovery. That's all I'd like to say for the moment. Uh, and our annual accounts are on our website um, and happy to take um, any questions. I hope you found those presentations helpful. Our aim has been to share the progress we've been making and what responding to a pandemic means for us as custodians of the Title Thames. Now to questions. As we've filmed this year, there's no need to put up your hands and wait for a microphone. Simply email your questions to us at events at pla.co.uk. That's events at pla.co.uk. We will collate the questions and post answers to them online a week or so after the film is released. And of course, if you need anything further, our corporate affairs teams will be able to help. You can reach out to them via the same email address. So for now, thank you very much for taking the time to be part of this innovative event. Let us know whether it worked for you and suggest any improvements you like so we can use them in the future. Take care. Stay well.